seven, six, five. All three engines up and burning. One of the questions Two, I get asked one, constantly zero, is, how did you get your job off. up there? Did NASA post a job listing for seamstresses? And I tell them, that's the strange thing is, they don't advertise for the jobs out there. I um, uh, knew we had seamstresses because, of course, with the sewing of Apollo and everything else and the suits and stuff there. And so um, we have in our local paper called Florida Today, um, they have articles about space all the time. And so there happened to be a woman sewing a, a thermal barrier by hand in the paper. And um, not even knowing me, her name was Pilar Ryan. And I sent her an email and I asked her what the qualifications were. And um, you had to have an associate's degree and you had to know some blueprint reading. So I thought, you know what? And I, I, I thought, you know what? I'm going to try. So it's United Space Alliance was the company that I worked for. And so you could only apply on the computer. So I did. And for six months, I waited. I wanted so badly to work on the space shuttle or in space in general. So when my twin sister and I were 10, we used to take our crayons. I'm going to start, I'm going to start again. <laughs> I'm going to start again. When we were 10, my sister and I used to take crayons and draw patches and send them to Houston and ask, would they consider our designs for whatever mission was coming up? <laughs> and so we would get a polite thanks but no thanks letter, but we would get an autographed picture out of it, and that kind of took care of things for a while. So starting with Apollo 7, my sister and I, long before we knew about acid-free paper, we used to cut articles out of the paper, and I have scrapbooks from Apollo 7 on, and they're falling apart, but I still do. So. When I applied and I didn't hear anything for the six months, I literally got down on my knees and I said, you know how badly I want to be out there. And in my heart, I felt he said to me, don't worry, in due time, your time will come. Just have patience. So I bought this lanyard, and it says, um, oh gosh, I'm going to forget, um, to quilt this human to finish divine. And so this was a lanyard I bought, and I stuck it on my, my bedroom mirror, and every day I would look at the lanyard, and every day just wish there's got to be some day that I'll be able to be out there. So after I tweaked my resume, four days later the call came, and it said Kennedy Space Center on the caller ID. And I thought, this is a sick joke. Someone's playing on me, because I couldn't believe that it would actually be that. So I had a call, and they asked me, we want you to interview. And so I did. And so a day before my interview, they said, we have three people who are going to interview you at once. And I'm freaking out, because I was scared. And, um, but I, I, I got there early. And um, the story I tell, and it's kind of frustrating, um, my husband was in the Navy 24 years, and I was his biggest cheerleader. But the morning I had my interview, um, he says to me, well, Jeannie, don't get your hopes up too high. And I was mad at him when I left. And I looked at him, <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, I was your biggest cheerleader for 24 years and this is the send off you're giving me? And he says, but I know how badly you want it. And so I was kind of miffed when I went. So I turned around and I said to him, you wait, I'm driving a clunker right now. When I get this job, and I will get this job, <laughs> I said, I'm buying myself a new car because I live an hour away from Kennedy Space Center. I live in Melbourne, Florida. So I had my two hour long interview and I felt like everything was fine. In those six months that I waited to find out, I got on the computer and studied thermal protection on the off chance that if by some miracle I had an interview, I wouldn't sound stupid. <laughs> and, um, but when I went in there, um, I was there for two hours, asked a zillion questions, but I felt like I was at a cocktail party. I was trying it in my head so I wouldn't get too nervous. And so after my interview, they said, oh, you did really well, and so we, we've got a kind of a favor to ask of you. And I said, well, OK. And they said, well, how would you like to go out to the thermal protection facility? And I said, really? And so they said, well, let me call Kim. And Kim came, and she said, well, I can't come, but here, I'll have um, Debbie Arsenault. She'll take you out there. Well, Debbie was a tech that started years and years ago. She drove me out to the thermal protection facility, and all the while I'm talking her head off. Surprise. No, talking her head off about how badly I wanted to be out there since I was a little girl. And so she says, you know, I started out here myself 16 years ago, and she gave me a hug when I went in the building and said, I really wish you a lot of luck, and I hope you get it. So I was introduced to all the ladies at the thermal protection facility. And I thought, that's nice. It's a courtesy thing. They don't interview. We don't have a lot of people come out here and interview. So that's them being nice to us. So four days later, 
And when I came home, my phone rang again and Kennedy Space Center was on the caller ID again. So this time I'm with my older daughter and I says to Jen, this is the most important phone call your mom will ever get in her whole life. So they called and said, we decided we picked you. And I said, really? Keep in mind, the only reason why there was an opening, there was not an opening at all. Just a few months before, with all the stuff that we work with, I've had issues with itching too, but uh, one of the ladies, her name was Ruby, had asked to be transferred out of the department. Otherwise, there never would have been an opening. I was the very last one they hired for the thermal protection facility in the job that we did. So that to me is a miracle right there. So when my boss called and told me that I had gotten the job, um, I, um, he said, we loved you the minute we saw you. We knew you were enthusiastic. You knew everything, because I would watch NASA TV. I was, I was really into everything. And so he said, we wanted somebody with, with passion for the program, and we could see that when we saw you. And I said, well, what about the other girls? And he said, you were the only one we asked to go out. And then he said, kind of frustrated, and it never even occurred to you that when we invited you out to the thermal protection facility that you had been hired that day? And I said, how in the world would I know that? And he said, but you were. And so he said, we want, he said, I'll interview the other ladies, but I want this one. So when it was time to call my husband, one of the ladies at his office answered and said, well, did you get it? And I said, yeah, but don't tell him. So he comes on the phone and he said, well, and I said, well, it's time for us to start looking for a new car. <laughs> so I, I put this in because this is inside Discovery, right before she's heading for the Smithsonian. So again, they said, how would you guys like to say goodbye to the shuttles? And they would let us go in them one last time. So I said, can I go in the wheel well one last time? I was one of the last ones to sew her thermal barriers in. And I said, I want a picture to show my grandchildren, because we didn't have a lot of pictures. They didn't allow photography a lot in the areas where we worked. So I said, program's winding down. Can I at least get this? So that's me pointing out my bright pink stitches. So again, I tell my granddaughters, no, Grandma doesn't have a degree, but Grandma was an artist. But I tell them, don't ever look down on anybody who worked for a living and worked with their hands, because we were artists and we were craftspeople. And I said, and Grandma did a very important job. And I said, you don't know how the passion Grandma had when I would be crawling up into her belly, because that was her heart. And I helped bring them home. So, sorry. So anyway, in this picture, I proudly tell my granddaughters, you know what? Grandma's got stitches in the Smithsonian, and how many grandmas can ever tell their grandkids that? 